You are listening to The Art of Sales. Everyone sells every day. And this is your source for conversational, real-world sales and prospecting methods that you are comfortable using and that get results. You'll help people buy instead of pushing them into being sold. Here's your host, Art Subcheck. Hey, everybody. We've got a special guest today who's going to show you how to win in today's crowded marketplace. Many salespeople think that they need to drop their price or have the lowest prices to win business. Now, when they do drop prices, if they even do get the deal, they're giving away profit many times unnecessarily. So what's the answer in today's competitive environment? To win deals at the price you want, the needed strategy is differentiation. Now, many people think marketing is the sole source of differentiation, but sales differentiation presents an untapped opportunity to create meaningful value and stand out from the competition. And today's guest is going to show us exactly how to do that. Lee Sauls is a leading sales management strategist and CEO of Sales Architects. He is a recognized expert in sales differentiation and works with senior executives and business owners across all industries, helping their salespeople win more deals at the prices they want. Lee's a frequently sought after keynote speaker and consultant on sales differentiation, sales force development, hiring, onboarding, compensation, and other sales performance topics. He's also an award-winning author of several books, including his latest bestseller, Sales Differentiation, which won the silver medal for top sales book of 2018 from Top Sales World. Lee, welcome. All right. Always a pleasure. How are you, my friend? I am doing fantastic. And let's get to the most important stuff first. How are your sons doing in baseball? <laughs> doing fantastic. Uh, my son had a Legion game last night, just missed hitting uh, two home runs, but he hit it to the furthest part of the ballpark and wound up with two doubles. Wow. And uh, for, for the audience out there, I, many of you know I'm a huge baseball fan, and uh, Lee would probably rival me for for that distinction. And I think last time we spoke, we probably talked business for about 10 minutes, and then we talked baseball for about a half hour, uh, which most people would probably find pretty boring. So we'll, we'll, we'll stop that, and we'll get right into the business <laughs> part here. So, so Lee, your, your newest book is Sales Differentiation. Explain, what is sales differentiation all about? Sure. So can I be politically incorrect? Absolutely. Please okay, do. Wonderful. Okay. So when I was a teenager, I, I became pregnant, if you will, with this idea, this whole idea of differentiation. This is where I became intrigued. So I, I had this job. Uh, a friend of the family had this idea. And so this is in the 1980s, the, this idea of not owning a dry cleaning service, but rather being the pickup and delivery component. And he said, I believe people would be willing to pay a premium to have someone come to their home, get their clothes, and then return them clean. So I was his driver. That was one of my uh, jobs as a teenager. And, and that really intrigued me for the first time about this whole thing of differentiation. Would people be willing to pay for something, pay more for something, if they perceived there was meaningful difference? And they did. The business did tremendously well. But it wasn't until very recently that I had encapsulated this whole philosophy around sales differentiation to be able to share it with the world. So I like to say I got pregnant with the idea as a teenager, but I wasn't ready to pop out and come see everyone and share it with everyone until now. But well, that, that was a long pregnancy, but uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you finally delivered because it is certainly, it's certainly important today. So explain why it is just super important today that salespeople differentiate themselves, their product, their company, everything. Yeah. And so when we think of this topic of differentiation, I don't think it's any more important today than it was yesterday, and it'll be no more important tomorrow meaning it's already at the tantamount, the most critical level. In the past, 
in the present and the future. And, and when you look at sales differentiation, there's, there's two parts of it. There's sales differentiation in what you sell and sales differentiation in how you sell. Because it doesn't matter what you sell. At some point, there's going to be a conversation about price. And this is where prospects are trying to justify the price you've put in front of them with the value they perceive that they're going to receive. And that's when the game begins. That's when they're they're looking to see, okay, what did you do in the process as you position what you sell? What did you do during the process to differentiate how you sell, provide additional value? And they look at that relative to the price. They say, is that experience between sales differentiation and what you sell and how you sell commensurate with the number that I'm looking at? And if it is, you're getting a deal. If it's not, you're in big trouble. And so many salespeople, as as you know, simply give up and they say, well, I, yeah, I'm, I'm selling a commodity. What, what We sell the same thing as everybody else. And when they say that, they have just pretty much given up. And, and I've always said that if you think you sell a commodity, you do. And I love the part where you say that it, you, you can differentiate in, in how you sell. And, and a lot of sales reps don't look at it that way. No, no they, don't. They, they don't. If you look at every interaction that you have between a salesperson and a, a prospective buyer, their opportunities from the very first point where you're prospecting all the way through the discovery meeting, through the proposal, through customer service, account manager, it goes on and on and on, where you can provide meaningful value that your competition is not, that will help you to stand out and will lead you to win more deals at the prices you want. But salespeople are hypersensitive to differentiation around what they're selling. And they get very worried. You know, they're looking for this holy grail of, gosh, we've got to be the only one in the world with this particular feature or function. And that's rare. I mean, Art, in your years doing this, how many companies have you found that had this holy grail of they're the only ones in the world to possess some feature or function? Right? It's pretty <laughs> rare. And, and and so many salespeople go to their manager saying, boss, yeah, we're getting killed on price out there. You know, we, we, we got to do better on price. Yeah. So you, you've you developed 19 sales differentiation concepts that, that you share in your book. And by the way, everybody, the uh, link to the book will be uh, in the, the show page. And I strongly encourage you go out there and get it. Leah actually sent me an advanced copy for uh, a review. And I initially sat down and skimmed it, but I, I remember it was a Saturday evening and I'm reading the electronic copy and, and I'm sitting there on my couch and about three hours later I finished because the skimming turned into, oh my gosh, th this is awesome. So I encourage everybody go out and get the book after you listen to the podcast here. But Lee, why don't you share just a few of those concepts with us? Sure. So yeah, I'll put it in, the, in, the, in terms of something I'm seeing, an interesting dynamic today. So uh, have you come across a product called Dude Wipes? No, I haven't. Okay. So there's these two guys that are actually on, on Shark Tank, and they're in, attempting to disrupt an age-old industry, toilet paper. And they've developed these wipes, and it's only for men. Sorry, sorry, ladies, there. It's only for men, and it, it's pretty pricey. It's about seven dollars a package, and so we've been comfortable with our present solution of toilet paper for ages. And the uh, the CEO raised an interesting question in Men's Health magazine, and he said, "If you got chocolate on your arm." Would you wipe it off with a dry paper towel and feel clean? Now, that's a gross example, but you get the visual. And what he's attempting to do is to disrupt complacency, help you to think differently about the solution you have or could have. And if you think of that visual that, that he's presented with that question, he's really done that. I mean, I remember when I first read that, uh, I was like, wow, I don't think I'm going to be comfortable again because of, of what he's done. And <laughs> another company's come along. Have you have you heard of Tushy? Well, I, I think I'm about to. <laughs> okay. So they're selling home bidets. And they're also posing that paper towel question, but they're taking it a step further. They're positioning ROI. 
They're saying if you have their bidet, you'll use less toilet paper, so there'll be a savings for you. Now, the toilet paper companies have shot back. So Charmin has has come back, and they've come up with their forever roll. Or it's the biggest roll of toilet paper you've ever seen in your life. It's huge. And their promise is that it's going to last a month. So they're positioning that you'll never run out of toilet paper. So what each of these companies is doing is steering the conversation away from price and focusing on providing meaningful value to buyers, helping them think differently about the solution they have or could have. So one of the concepts I talk about in the book is that sales differentiation affords you the opportunity to shape buyer decision criteria. And one of my favorite questions to ask audiences, and I've done this all across the country, I've done it up in Canada, all different industries, and the question is this, who knows more about the world of potential solutions in your industry, you or the people you sell to? And Art, in all the years I'm doing this, I've never had one single salesperson in any location, in any industry say that, oh, the people I sell to know much more about the world of potential solutions in my industry. Never once. And there's the problem. Yeah. You know what the problem is? That there are, are pundits out there, there are sales managers out there, there that are telling salespeople that they're selling to educated buyers because this new fad, you may have heard of it, called the internet, is producing educated buyers. Well, every salesperson has said that they know more than the people they sell, they sell to about the world of potential solutions in their industry. So even though people have access to information to learn, they still aren't developing the same level of expertise that salespeople do in their respective industry. And so uh, the follow-up question, I ask the audience to raise their hand if they could tell me the difference between a regular apple and an organic apple. Or do you know the difference? The label. The label. Actually, most people say the price. (laughs) I had one this morning, actually. Did you? So I never have more than a couple of hands that go up, no matter how big the audience is. And, And I ask everyone to look around the room. This is a product we buy every week. And we don't know how to make an informed buying decision on an Apple. You think people know how to buy what you're selling? Because if you research organic, I mean, there are meaningful differences. And if you don't know them, you notice two things about organic fruit. It's expensive and it's not as pretty as the other fruit, is it? Like the apple you had this morning wasn't as shiny, was it? Well, of course, it didn't have all the chemicals. Well, well there you go. And most people don't know that. Right. They don't know what those differences are. So if you take that premise, keep in mind that even though you may be selling to CEOs, presidents, VPs, COOs, CFOs, and they have these glorious titles. A flaw is thinking that they know more or as much as you about the world of potential solutions in your industry. So what can we do as salespeople? Let's say I am selling a generic product and and we can, by the way, I'm, I'm going to have to put in a sensitive, uh, caution, sensitive material uh, warning on this episode. After all the things we, <laughs> we've covered here. But, uh, so let's, let's say I'm selling something that somebody would consider to be a, a, a commodity. Mm-hmm. As a salesperson, what what can I do in order to differentiate myself, my product, anything to stand out from the crowd? Yeah, so depending upon what it is we're talking about, if you're a salesperson and you have no ability to influence the construct or the packaging of the product, it just is, and you look out at the landscape and say, boy, people are selling the same thing that, that I am, similar price point, maybe even lower price point then I would focus on differentiation in how you sell, looking at every interaction that you have and asking yourself, what can I do differently than the competition that people would find meaningful so that they would rather buy from me 
rather than the alternative. Exactly. So what what are some of those things? Okay, so why don't we talk about the first step, prospecting. Very, very beginning. If you ask salespeople, take a room of salespeople, say, who loves prospecting? Maybe one hand will go up. It's critical to prospect because if you don't prospect, you don't have meetings, no meetings, no proposals, no proposals, no sales, no sales, no commission check. It's a very logical progression. But prospecting, As much as we dislike it, there's somebody that hates it even more than us. You know who that is, Art? The person who's getting a cold call. You got it. The person on the other side of the phone that we've made to feel like the sales call of the minute. We have no reason for that call other than we're communicating. We want to sell our stuff. That's the sole purpose. So there's a strategy I I talk about in the book. And it's called the sales crime theory. And it sounds like this. Imagine it's two in the morning and there's a pounding on your front door. It's the police. Art, what'd you do? Well, it'd be terrified. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they want to have a conversation with you about a crime that's recently been committed. Now, they don't randomly pick you and your home for this conversation. They followed a trail of evidence. And that trail has led them to you for a conversation right now, which leads to a parallel concept that I call a sales crime theory. Every buyer, every single one of them, there is a way to get that business. But we play the game blindfolded. We just dial for dollars, making these random calls, hoping hoping that we're going to strike gold, and rarely does that happen. The idea of a sales crime theory is to identify evidence that would answer this question. Why should they want to have a conversation with you right now? That's what we're seeking. So it could be something on their side. So for example, let's say you sell audiovisual equipment for conference rooms. So some examples of sales crime theory evidence that would tell you that they should want to have a conversation with you right now would be a relocation or a new opening or an acquisition and maybe even a new CFO being hired. In each of those four circumstances, there's probably a conversation going on about the technology in that conference room, which means that they should want to have a conversation with you right now. So you take that evidence, position it as part of your prospecting, so you show that you care, you show that they're not the sales call of the minute, but rather you're reaching out because you found some bit of news and you thought you might be able to help them with this initiative. So it's about the research being relevant, having some intelligence, knowing something about them, and we're we're personalizing the approach as opposed to just shotgunning the same generic cold call. And of course, hopefully many of my listeners are doing exactly that, smart calling. So let me give you two scenarios. Salesperson A, he's prospecting and he's lucky enough to get someone on the phone and he says, uh, yeah, I understand you're uh, the head of manufacturing and I'm guessing that you're looking to reduce costs and increase efficiency, and that's something my company does. Salesperson B says, I recently read an interview with your CEO who's talking about an initiative to reduce costs and increase efficiency, and I'm guessing since you're the head of manufacturing that that responsibility is going to be passed along to you. Well, we work with heads of manufacturing to address those issues. Or which of those two salespeople is getting the meeting? Obviously, the person who has some intelligence, they know something about that person, the trigger event, what's going on in their world. So they're relevant. doesn't sound like every other cold caller. Yeah, but Art, which one had the better product? Uh, They both had the same product, right? It didn't matter, did it? No. So that's what I mean when I talk about sales differentiation and how you sell. So you had salesperson A, salesperson B. Salesperson A may have even had a superior product, but never got in the door. Great point. Great point. Lee, we could talk for hours here, and I do want to have you back on so that we can go deeper in in several of these areas. But I'll tell you what, let's wrap this up with some final advice that you have for professional salespeople today. 
to take an introspective look at both sides of the equation, what you sell and how you sell, and develop questions. Nobody likes to be lectured, and we didn't get to talk about this today. You know, we, we said that we know more than the people that we're selling to about the world of potential solutions in our industry. But if we go into an executive's office and lecture them on all the things that they don't know that we know, it makes for a really short meeting. But if you develop these, what I call positioning questions, open-ended questions designed to help people think differently about the solution they have or could have, that's going to be your key to opening the door and leading to conversation that allows you to differentiate yourself. So really what you're talking about doing is reverse engineering your solution so that you can come up with those questions that highlight where you you might be different or where you have an advantage over the competition. Absolutely. And there's a five-step process and a series of workshops in, in my book, Sales Differentiation, uh, that helps you identify what your differentiators are and communicate them in a meaningful way. Because here's the deal. If you have differentiators, because I find this all the time, I'm sure you do as well, Art, you'll talk with executive teams and sales teams so passionate about their differentiators. And they say, boy, we should never have to lower our price. We should never have to discount. And then it gets to the field and that's all that happens. It's a price war. They're completely ineffective in building that same excitement and passion with someone on the other side of the desk that they see so clearly. And if you can't build that passion in a buyer, you might as well not have any differentiators because there's only one conversation you're going to have, which is price. Great point. And this really highlights the fact that you can think that you have all these differentiators, but unless they perceive them to be as different, it doesn't matter. Thus, the need for the questions and being prepared for what questions you're going to ask, because we can't just go in there and beat our chest and say, oh, we're different than an ABC company. All right. So, Lee, you've mentioned your book. Tell us how everybody can get that and uh, anything else that you have that you'd like to direct people to. Sure. So, uh, again, the title of the book is Sales Differentiation. It's available both in the brick and mortar stores as well as online, uh, like at Amazon. And it's available in hardcover, Kindle, and audiobook. Regardless of where you buy the book, go to salesdifferentiation.com and register for my Sales Differentiation Minute video series. And you'll get a video once a week, a minute or so, to help you implement sales differentiation strategy. So that website is salesdifferentiation.com. All right. And again, everybody, I encourage you, go out, get the book, and definitely go sign up for the video. Everybody's got time for a minute a week, and it will change the way that you sell. All right. Hey, everybody, you know what time it is. Your attitude will be I in every way you'll never feel what they say. It's the art of the sales. It's the quote of the day. That's right. It's time for the quote of the day. So, Lee, one of our regular features is the quote of the day. And I know you've been inspired by many people in your sales career. So what's one of your favorite quotes? And tell us why that's important to you. So, unfortunately, I don't know who to credit this quote to, but it's been a cornerstone of mine for an eternity. And it's, I'd rather have part of a watermelon than all of a grape. Have you ever heard that one? I can't say that I have. I don't know uh, who first came out with that, but you can see the visual where, you know, sometimes we, we get so egocentric and think we've got to have the whole enchilada when it's tiny, where as there might be a bigger piece of the pie to have that would be more meaningful to you. That is interesting. Many of the quotes I've, of course, we've heard before. I have not heard that one. And by the way, when I, I don't know who originally came up with the quote, I always attribute it to a Greek philosopher. Um, so, <laughs> all right, Lee, thank you so much for, for being on today. Again, everybody, the book is Sales Differentiation, and you can go to salesdifferentiation.com to get Lee's uh, video, one-minute video of the week. 
Thank you all so much for investing your valuable time with us today. If you're getting value from the show, please tell a couple colleagues, send them to the show site, theartofsales.com, theartofsales.com. And for more free sales tips, hundreds actually, go to my blog, smartcalling.com, smartcalling.com. Until next time, go out and make it your best sales day ever. 